Thank you so much, everybody. Welcome again to Human Light 2022. We are thrilled to have you today and that you're able to join us for our third virtual celebration. Cheers to sharing this occasion together with us. Since 2001, Human Light has been a secular holiday to express and celebrate our values and our vision as we recognize the ending of one year and look forward to the beginning of a new one. So we'd like to start and thank you to, and give a special thanks to the Human Light sponsors for this year. The Human Light sponsors for 2022 are the American Humanist Association, Go Humanity, formerly Foundation Beyond Belief, the Free Thought Society, Unitarian Universalist Humanists, Black Nonbelievers, American Ethical Union, Freedom From Religion Foundation, Baltimore Coalition of Reason, New Jersey Humanist Network, the Washington Area Secular Humanists, and the Where We're Headed podcast. Hi, so to help express the meaning of this holiday, we light candles rather than curse the darkness. We light candles to symbolize lighting the way forward to a better future for humanity and for the planet. We'd like to welcome our candle lighters. We're gonna go live to the Free Thought Society, Margaret Downey, as she lights the first candle for tonight. Hey, thanks, Ro. Thank and you. thanks everyone for attending. Yes, I am the founder and president of the Free Thought Society, and we are so pleased to be a co-sponsor of this event. And I'll be lighting the first candle, symbolizing the light of reason. Living with reason means to conduct oneself rationally, logically, and applying critical thinking skills to everyday choices we encounter. Lighting this candle symbolizes the end of the dark ages and the continuation of the age of reason. All right, there it is. My candle is red, symbolizing reason. Thank you for attending. Thank you so much, Margaret. Next, we're gonna go live to Black Nonbelievers, Mandisa Thomas. Thank you so much for joining. We're gonna pass it live to Mandisa. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the introduction, Roger. My name is Mandisa Thomas, and I am the founder and president of Black Nonbelievers. And I am lighting the blue candle for compassion. I light this candle for compassion for those who have lost loved ones this year and who are going through hard times. I light this candle for compassion for those who give it, yet who also need it. Human beings suffer challenges. Sometimes we feel emotions other than joy, but it is with compassion that we can repair and rebuild. I light this blue candle for compassion in a holder that pays tribute to Gene Taylor, a member of Black nonbelievers who passed away this year. He was also a member of the Freedom for Religion Foundation. His death hit the Atlanta community very hard, and it is important that we continue to, to keep this light of compassion that he showed to us. May he and other loved ones never be forgotten, and we continue to live by example even when we fall short. I light this candle now for, um, for compassion. to Jean and everyone who is celebrating human light this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mandisa. We're now going to go live to the Unitarian Universalist Humanist Association's Mix Lika Lewis Cornwell. Hi, Lika. Hello, Ro, and thank you so much. And thank you to everyone for being here. I am lighting this candle. Let me go ahead and light the candle first, um, symbolizing the glow of hope. For as long as humanity has built community, we have co-created places of safety in times of dark and cold. While new tools and technologies have made many changes in life since then, time has not changed these most fundamental truths. Our paths are twined together in community and the vibrant communities we offer and that we build together offer hope. On behalf of the Unitarian Universalist Humanist Association, I wish you and yours the glow of hope through the winter and in the year to come. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Lika, for the glow of hope. For our last candle, we are going to a video from the executive director of the American Humanist Association and her daughter, Safia. My name is Nadia Dutchin, and I'm the executive director of the American Humanist Association, and this is my daughter, Safia. We light this candle to symbolize humanity. May we, like Brother James Baldwin, allow our fire to clarify and light the way through our shared history and into our shared future. shines with the light of reason. May it illuminate the wonders of our world. This flame glows with a warm compassion. May it expand the caring circle of our love. This flame gleams like a hope-filled beacon. May it sustain us through the darkest winter night. These three flames mark a joyful season. May they unite us in a happy human light. And may reason, compassion, and hope light the path of every human Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was a human light -like classic called These Three Flames. And you were just listening to Robert Edwin, who is a member of the Philadelphia Ethical Society. I want to thank you for that wonderful song, uh, for those wonderful words and lyrics, and also the preceding candle lighters and all of their wonderful words. And even that hat tip to James Baldwin that we threw in there or that uh, Nadia threw in there. Thank you all for that so much. A better future for humanity and a more equitable world is attainable with our support and service. To learn about some valuable work being done and that is still needed, we welcome Go Humanity, formerly Foundation of Belief, uh, Executive Director, Tiffany Ho. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, Ro. Thank you for that introduction. Thank you everyone for being here. As we're celebrating right now, there are many people around the world who don't get this opportunity. But you all can help to change that by supporting Go Humanity and living out our values of reason, compassion, humanity, and hope so that we can all celebrate. Go Humanity is a humanist service organization founded in 2009 by Dale McGowan. Our mission is to end poverty and hunger, promote good health and well being, and foster employment opportunities and economic growth in ways that exemplify humanist values. We believe in humans helping humans shared and local power, and radical inclusion. We envision a world in which all people have access to food, water, and life's basic necessities. And we work towards this goal with our network of more than 100 service teams across the US and around the world. Some of our programs include the Food Security Project and Disaster Resiliency, Resiliency Project. Since we were founded, we have given away more than $3.7 million in grants and 260,000 volunteer hours. In 2022 alone, we distributed more than 260,000 pounds of food to more than 160,003 people. And we responded to disasters such as the grain shortages in Ukraine, a water crisis in Mississippi, and Hurricane Ian in Florida. As we gather here today to celebrate human light, I hope that you will keep in mind all the work that still needs to be done and join us in building a globally thriving community. You can learn more about our work and volunteer at www.gohumanity.world. We also welcome any and all donations because every penny counts. 
You can donate by texting Go Humanity to 26989. Thank you and happy human light. Thank you so much, Tiff. Thank you very much. Up next, we're going to hear from Patrick Colucci of the Human Light Network reading The Meaning of Human Light by Delhi Messenger. Hello. Uh, thank you, Ro. Hello, everyone. Ah, there we go. Thank you, Ro. Um, happy Human Light, everyone. Thank you all very much for joining us and being here today. Uh, I'm with the Human Light Network, and for over 20 years, we've been uh, working to help promote awareness of the Human Light holiday. Please check out our website, humanlight.org, and the Human Light Facebook group. I'd like to share with you all today a short excerpt from a talk that was given at a Human Light celebration in 2002 by Mr. Delhi Messenger, a humanist leader and a secular celebrant from Australia. Quoting Mr. Messenger, this holiday celebration we have called Human Light because just as we are conscious of how the sun brings light and life to the physical universe, we realize that human beings can bring light and life to one another. Many of us call ourselves humanists. This means that we are dedicated to bringing light and life to our fellow human beings. The light we bring, we usually call reason, which means the clearest and best thinking we have to guide our way through life's challenges. The life we bring is the love, the hope, and the compassion that we have for our fellow human beings, our neighborhood, our environment, our world. We know that life brings sorrows, but it also brings its moments of happiness, of enriching relationships and fun and laughter. Human light means all these things. We get our light and our life and our love from our own experiences and from carefully listening to the best thoughts and insights from all kinds of sources. Thus, we live life as happily and responsibly as we can, and we bring to others and ourselves all the joy that we can. In short, we try to be enlightened and to bring to our local circle and to our world that human beauty and light, which mirrors the beauty and color of the morning sunrise. We believe this is a good way to live, the best way to live. We feel good about this. We feel honest, authentic, and comfortable. We're well aware that uh, we are often very fragile on our own. So most importantly of all, we need to bond, to connect, and to work, and to share with others. That is why our relationships with our loved ones, with our friends, with the people who share our values are the most important things in our lives. That is why we are together today. We are here to celebrate each other, to create and strengthen bonds, and to enjoy and have fun with each other in this traditional holiday season. End of quote. Thank you so much, Patrick. Those are wonderful words by Delhi, and they definitely resonate with me. Um, we'd also like to say that human light is a full body, full sensory experience. So we're fortunate to have the multimedia talents of Emily Wilson, who produced the next two videos for us. Um, and I have to just throw in a little bit of a personal uh, extra hat tip to Emily, because she has also very graciously um, and excellent, excellently designed the uh, logo and artwork for the podcast that is a sponsor for tonight, the Where We're, Where We're Headed podcast. So she is definitely one of our wonderful, great talents. First, we have a sing-along version of the Seekers Come the Day video, and then some great ideas for human light decorations. I'm going to turn this over to Emily Wilson and company. One day soon a song shall rise you hear it with the sleep still in your eyes you wake into a brand new day and you hear bells ringing voices singing 
on how to decorate for human light. Let's get started. At the bare minimum, a human light decorative display would be a set of three to four candles. But if you want something more elaborate, then you definitely need to plan ahead. Take the following into consideration. Room space, budget, time, ideas and references for inspiration, and a priority list. If you procrastinate, then you will most likely have to scale down, but if you plan early, then not only will you have enough time to bring your ideas to life, but you will also have enough time for any additional ideas you want to implement. Also, for any newcomers, if you're watching this video just a few days before or right after Human Light, don't panic. You can still map out your timeline by planning for next year. This is especially beneficial to do right after the holidays have ended because many stores will have holiday decorations like ornaments and lights on clearance. While you are planning, it's also important to heavily emphasize that there is a basis you should absolutely use to liven up any environment, which is the human light -like color scheme. The main human light -like colors are red, yellow, and gold, and blue. Not only should you use that scheme in your decorations, but make sure your items are also vibrant and saturated because a collection that's mostly dull or faded will not look striking. Another aspect of human light decor I highly recommend is assigning those three colors to the three main values, which are reason, compassion, and hope. There is no official color set for each value, so this is entirely up to your own interpretation. Some people will include humanity as a fourth optional value in their decorative displays. If you decide to include humanity, then I would use white while saving the three primary colors for the three main values. Okay, now that you understand both planning and core decorating principles for human light, it's time to be creative! If you're not sure how to add unique elements to your display, then you should direct your vision to personal interests. These can include skills, hobbies, favorite decor items, positive memories from this year, seasonal, etc. If you want to see what a DIY human light display looks like, I'll give you a tour. My display extends between two different rooms, the dining room and the arcade. I'm heavily going off the color scheme and values by using color theory to assign blue for reason, yellow and gold for compassion, red for hope, and white for humanity. In the arcade, I have table and shelf displays dedicated to certain colors with a wide variety of items. Other room additions include a tree, a wood-stained medallion, and a poster illustration. The dining room is where I proudly show off my candle display. Other dining room additions include baskets, decorative stars, and three decorated shelves that come with electronic candles. So let's light it up for reason, compassion, and hope. But hey, don't just follow my lead. Let's visit other people's displays. This is Corey Franklin's gorgeous dining table. This table is an outstanding example of how to work with color and assign them to the values. To accessorize her display, Cory added fairy lights. She also shows her love for vases and plants and even included seasonal touches such as pine cones, snowflakes, ornaments, snowmen, and a table wreath centerpiece. Up next is Kelly Schultz's display. And how cute is this? 
On both sides of her candle display are two animal plushies. Bonus points for having the elephant and lion in human-like colors too. I also love the pine cones, the sliced fruit, and cinnamon sticks as accessories. Finally, we're going to think outside the box by decorating digitally with Gwen Seymour. You heard that right. Since some individuals and organizations celebrate virtually, Gwen made digital decor by creating an animated GIF of her visually stunning human light painting. A great, versatile way to adapt decor in virtual spaces. I hope you found this video to be useful. Thanks for watching, have fun decorating, and happy human light! Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's actually really cool. I hadn't seen that video before. That's really great. Thank you so much, Emily. And I hope you all saw the wonderful artwork, not just that she did, but so many other people did. I got to learn some of those skills. Maybe we can set up some tutorials or something later on. Um, if you didn't know her already, next, I'm excited to introduce to you Elle Harris. She's the author of the children's book, Elle the Humanist. And I got a chance to meet her earlier this year with Ms. Margaret Downey in San Antonio, Texas, and I'd like to introduce her to you all. Hello, everyone. I'm so honored and excited to be the keynote speaker at this year's Human Light event as we celebrate reason, compassion, and hope. Last year, my sister Bailey and I were able to light the candles at this event. Traditions make us feel connected, and I'm grateful to be part of this special community. Today, I will briefly share my story with you and then do a book reading of Ella the Humanist. I hope that my story can help secular children and families feel like they're not alone and also helps them know that they can talk about religion with their friends. This is my family. I have two brothers, a sister, and two dogs. We live in Santa Barbara, California. I love concerts, surfing, and soccer. My family loves science. I grew up watching shows like The Cosmos, Bill Nye the Science Guy, and PBS Kids. My family is also secular, and I grew up learning things like the seven secular virtues and the platinum rule. Many of you probably know my older sister, Bailey, who is the author of the Stardust book series. She is also a secular activist. I've grown up traveling around the country, watching my older sister, Bailey, at her speaking events. Now, I will talk about my latest book, Elle the Humanist. This was my elementary school in Salt Lake City, Utah, when I was eight years old. That year, many of my friends at school started talking to me about religion. Mormon children are baptized when they are eight years old. So they started talking about religion and baptisms with me and others at school this year. And I loved these conversations. For example, one of my friends, Penny, asked me what church I go to. I told her I don't go to any church. She couldn't believe it. She didn't even know that that was possible. She said I am the first person she knows that isn't religious. I went home and talked to my parents about this. They taught me about the thousands of different religions and gods that people have believed in throughout history. They taught me about the different gods that people believe in today around the world, and that almost all people believe in the religion that their parents taught them to believe in when they were young. I wonder what gods people will believe in in a hundred years from now. I hope it's Harry Styles. My mom and dad told me that many of their friends and family members aren't part of any religion, just like us. They told me that there are more and more people every day who aren't part of a religion. My mom told me she calls herself a humanist, and my dad calls himself either no religion or calls himself an atheist. They said I could choose to call myself whatever I would like. I really liked the word humanist after talking to my parents about it. Because I enjoyed these conversations with my friends at school so much, I asked my dad to help me write a book about this to share my experience with other children and families. We spent the next nine months writing this book. For the release of the book, I got on New Year's Utah talking about humanism, which was so cool. I was on so many podcasts and shows, including Speaking of Humanism. 
We were so excited that the amazing philosopher and author, Daniel Dennett, was willing to write the foreword to my book. I am so fortunate to have the support of people like Christian Wintermute, Margaret Downey, and many others who wrote blurbs to support the release of my book. The book was translated in German. We also donated the rights to El the Humanist to the Translations Project. This project allows people in Muslim-majority countries to download the book about science and free thought for free. My book was the first children's book in the program. I'm so happy to know that thousands of children around the world will be able to read my book and help them learn about ethics and humanism. Earlier this year, I read my book to a village in Peru where I did a humanitarian trip with my family. This was so much fun. Not everyone loves my book. This is my favorite one-star review on Amazon. They should rename this book El the Snowflake. I would strongly discourage anyone from purchasing this book unless you run out of wood for your fireplace or need something to burn. But I prefer to focus on the people I'm helping with my book. For every negative comment, there are 30 positive comments. And this makes me so excited to continue to use my book and experiences to help others. For example, my science teacher got a copy of my book earlier this year and it to his two young children. Last week, he told me that his family isn't religious and that he didn't know how to talk to his children about this. He said that my book made it simple for them to have meaningful conversations about religion and ethics with his children. This made me so happy. I will conclude my talk by reading L the Snowflake. I mean, L the Humanist. Hello. My name is Elle. It's nice to meet you. I'm a humanist. A humanist is a person who tries to be good because they want to make the world a better place for everyone. Have you heard of a humanist? Most of my friends at school have it, so they ask me questions to understand. Most of the time these questions start when my friends ask me what church I go to. I tell them that I don't go to any church. There are many humanist groups that give us the chance to be part of a community, the same way a religious church is a community. Some humanists choose to be part of an organized group. My family's community comes from our friends and family's school and local soccer club that we love. Some of my friends ask me how I know what is right and wrong if I don't go to church and study books from their churches like the Bible or Quran. My family doesn't read church books together. But we do love to read about science, nature, and history as we learn how to think about being good people. My parents taught me a simple rule to help me understand what is right and wrong. It's called the Platinum Rule. The Platinum Rule is simple. Treat others the way they would like to be treated. Rules like this have been taught for thousands of years. You can see on this fun chart how our Platinum Rule is very much like other golden rules. The humanist version of this, the platinum rule, is fun and easy. Here's how I use it. Would my friend like me to steal her toys? No, so I don't steal her toys. Would my friends like me to lie to them? No, so I don't lie to them. I can also do nice things with the platinum rule. Here's how this works. Would my friend like me to share my treats with them? Yes, so I share my treats with them. Would my mom like me to clean up my room and help with the dishes after dinner? Yes. So I clean up my room and help with the dishes after dinner. I have to remember that some people don't want to be treated like I want to be treated because we are all very different. This is why the Platinum Rule teaches us to treat other people the way they would like to be treated, not the way we would like to be treated. Here's how this works. I love to be tickled on my feet, but my brother Bryson doesn't like to be tickled on his feet. So I don't tickle Bryson on his feet, but I love when my mom tickles my feet. My friend Brinley doesn't like sushi like I do, so when I have a choice of where to go out to eat, I don't pick sushi restaurants. I try to pick restaurants with pizza because that's Brinley's favorite. Some of my friends ask me questions like, how do you know if you're good enough to get to heaven after you die? I don't know anything about this, but I know that being a good person and helping others makes the people around me happier, and that makes me feel happy. 
It doesn't matter if you're Chinese, Pakistani, German, Mexican, or if you're from the United States like me, or if you believe in Krishna, Poseidon, Jesus, Muhammad, or you don't believe in any gods or prophets like me. We're all trying our best to be happy as we live on this wonderful earth, and being a good person and loving others makes us all happier than anything else. Thank you very much for letting me spend a few minutes with you today. I hope that you all have a wonderful holiday season with family and friends as we all work together for a happy and peaceful world. Thank you. Thank you, Elle. Thank you so much. I'm so proud to have met you. That's a wonderful, wonderful work that you put together. And it reminds us of that old song, I Believe the Children Are the Future, because they really, really are. And so um, you're teaching not just other children, but you're teaching us. So thank you so, so very much. All right. Um, speaking of songs, <laughs> I'd like to uh, move on to our next, our next piece, which is a song that debuted this year at the Freedom From Religion Foundation's conference in San Antonio, where I met Elle. And uh, I have to say, full disclosure, I'm a part of it. And um, Mandisa Thomas from Black Nonbelievers, we were a part, are, are a part of this project. And we have been working on it behind the scenes for a long time, along with some other people who've been working even longer. Uh, this is a song written by the Freedom from, from Religion Foundation uh, co-president Dan Barker and performed by the Godless Gospel Ensemble. Here is Let's All Give Thanks. Let's all give thanks. Give thanks. Let's all give thanks. Let's all give thanks. Let's all give thanks with thanks is due. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's all give thanks. What better way to end our segments today for this Human Light program than by giving thanks. Thanks for each other. Thanks for just being here. Thanks for all the lessons that we've learned and that we're continuing to learn. Um, and just thanks for another opportunity to, not for religion, not for God, but to the people who make this world a better place for me and you. Thank you for everyone coming today. We are getting ready to do a toast. Let's raise our glass, our glasses, or wave our hands as we toast to reason, humanity, compassion, and to hope. Happy Human Light, everyone. Happy Human Light. Happy Human Light. Mm. Happy Human Light. Thank Happy you so much. Thank you so much, everybody.